All right, guys, so today we're going to be jumping into a Don't Watch These at Night. Haven't checked out one of these in a while, and I feel so good about it, and I'm smiling. These ones is going to be about Tinder. She just got her nine nines eating. <laughs> I remember swiping right on her profile oh. like it was yesterday. The bright screen of my phone illuminated her picture, casting mm -hmm. a ghostly glow in my dark room. Hi, Bella. Her name was Bella, mm -hmm. 23 years old. Twilight she had Bella? an enigmatic smile, one that seemed familiar, yet... I couldn't place where I had seen it before. Okay. Bella was the epitome of ethereal beauty, a mm -hmm. mesmerizing blend of grace and allure. Her eyes Glazing. were the most striking feature, relax. large and expressive, shimmering like pools of water under hey, the relax. silver moon. They we held get it. a depth that seemed we get almost it. otherworldly, captivating anyone who dared we meet get her it. gaze. Hey, we get it. You're in love already. You just got on Tinder. You didn't even swipe right yet, and you still glazing. Relax, okay? We get it. Her long hair cascaded down her shoulders oh, in we luscious get it. waves. The Hold color on. of midnight. A stark contrast to her fair porcelain skin. It framed her face perfectly, highlighting her high cheekbones and the delicate curve of her jawline. Her thin lips were curled into a subtle, enigmatic smile. You're not going to stop. Her slender and tall. Every aspect of her appearance was harmonious, creating an aura of elegance and an undeniable magnetic pull that was impossible to ignore. You're not going to stop. Her bio was intriguing, but vague. Just a quote from a famous poet. She was really into true crime documentaries. Netflix and chill? Oh, Netflix she thought it rained. chill and had a thing for good food. I felt drawn to her, somehow wondering if I had come across her before. After a few exchanges of witty banter and flirtatious remarks, we agreed to meet the at a local bar. Says Quirty. I had never been there before, but the name sounded oddly familiar. Right, the tide. As I approached Pause. the bar, a strange sensation washed over me. The neon sign flickered, casting a surreal light on the pavement. It felt like I was walking into a scene from a movie that I had seen long ago. A sense of deja vu that I couldn't shake off. The bar was dimly lit, with old jazz music playing in the background and a familiar scent of bourbons and cigars lingered okay. in the air. The atmosphere was intimate, almost too perfect. She was already there, there she seated go. at a corner table, her eyes reflecting the dim lights. As our eyes met, a shiver ran down my spine. Don't get scared she now. Was even more captivating in person. Her presence both alluring and somehow unsettling. Nah, she a killer. We hit it off immediately. Conversation flowed effortlessly. I know demon eyes when I see him. each other for years. Her laughter was infectious, and her stories were fascinating. Yet they tinged with an eerie familiarity. She spoke of places she had visited books she had read and her love for old horror films, books. many of which were my favorites too. As the night progressed, she made casual remarks that sent jolts of recognition through me. She mentioned a book I was currently reading as if she knew it was on my nightstand. She referenced a horrific dream, exactly like the one I had a week ago, a chilling nightmare that I hadn't shared with anyone. Each coincidence was more bizarre than the last, blurring the lines between reality and something otherworldly. Okay. When I finally gathered the courage to ask her about these strange coincidences, she was quick to brush off my question with a smile. But then she dropped a tantalizing prospect. She invited me to her place. By then, the drinks right. had clouded my judgment, and her sheer allure was irresistible. I agreed. But I could not have fully understood the gravity of my inebriated decision. What world was the that? The drive to her place was a blur. The streets were empty and the night seemed unusually still. Inebriated? As if the world was holding its breath. But when we arrived at her apartment, a chilling realization dawned upon me. I had been there before. The layout, the particular painting on the wall. You didn't the remember that? Rugs with weird symbols, even the way the door creaked as it opened. It was all too familiar. She was quick to lead me to her bedroom and close the door behind her. Okay, hold she on. leaned in to kiss me on okay. my cheek before excusing herself to fill us some wine. I don't but want to. As none. soon as I was there and saw a per. See, you already, I ain't gonna lie, you already got some weird 
signs and signals and sigils and rituals all over the place. I'm not thirsty, but I do want some booty, so. Particular book on the top of her desk, I froze. Dark magic of the Amazons. And in that moment, <laughs> Amazon. the deja vu, the dreams, the nightmares, they all made perfect sense. My memories flooded back in fragments, disjointed and hazy. I remembered swiping right on her profile, but that was not yesterday. It was the day before. The same bar, the same conversations, the same eerie oh, you coincidences. Getting dropped. What? I had lived this very night the previous day as well. But there was Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. Let me pause it real quick. It looked like you reliving the same nightmare, but in the midst of this nightmare, did you get some at least? Because if so, hey, you reliving it, you get to hit it again and again and again. Something <clears throat> more, something sinister that I had forgotten. My heart raced as I recalled the chilling discovery from the previous night that I had spent at that place. I had seen her oh. slip something into my drink. She's Bill's Cosby daughter. Overshadowed by the horrifying sight that followed. In her kitchen, amidst the normalcy of utensils and herbs and Indian spices, lay a collection of knives like one I had never seen before. It made sense to me later that they were not meant for cooking, but for something more gruesome. And then I had come across the bones in her trash, human-like, scattered carelessly, which she had nonchalantly explained were for her dog. Whatever right. she had spilled into the drink last night was slow to take effect because in that moment, I recalled saying to myself, there's no dog in this apartment. Panic had surged through me as the truth dawned. She wasn't just a strange woman from Tinder. She was dangerous. I had grabbed a knife from her kitchen and Hold on, before, I, before you kill me, let me get some. Later with a meat cleaver, she was surprised to find me stabbing her heart. I had acted Ooh. in self-defense. Before I could even think what I had done, I was quick to dump her body in the bathtub. The drop off. I fled, the horror of that night haunting me. But as these memories resurfaced, reality twisted into a nightmare. If she was dead, then who was the woman standing before me with two wine glasses? I excused myself to the bathroom, hoping to make sense of the chaos. The bathroom was exactly as I remembered from the previous night. Well, duh, it's the same house already. We get immaculate, it now, bro. Except for the overbearing stench. And then there she was, in the bathtub, lifeless, just as I had left her body. The room spun around me, my mind struggling to comprehend the impossible. If she was dead, who was the girl outside? Returning to the living room, right. I was met with the most terrifying sight of my life. The woman, the one that I had been with all night, stood there, but she was different. Her ha eyes had, were how pitch this black, how is this happening? of darkness that seemed to consume the light around her. Her skin was unnaturally pale, and the wound in her chest, the one that I had inflicted, was a grotesque testament to her death. In that moment, the horrific truth became clear. I had been on a date with a ghost, the vengeful spirit of the cannibalistic woman I had murdered the previous night. She had orchestrated this nightmarish repeat of our last encounter, a macabre replay leading to her ultimate revenge. As she lunged at me, her teeth transformed into scissor-like blades, a twisted smile on her ghostly face. I stumbled backward, terror gripping my heart. The world around me faded into darkness soon as fountains of blood ah. gushed through my neck. And as life started escaping my body, I felt you know, cold, lady? purple lips kissing my cheek for one last time. I was fresh out of university, 21 years of age and finally single. I was in my flat reading over the final few breakup texts from just days before. Her name was Emma. I stared at them for a good hour or so, trying my best to process it all. Reading through them all, I felt no need to cry. There was no sad. Wait, what happened? She broke up with you? What you my bad, y'all. Hold on. What this nigga say? I was fresh out of university, 21 okay. years of age, and finally single. I was in my flat reading over the final few breakup texts from just days before. Her name was Emma. 
I stared at them for a good hour or so, trying my best to process it all. Reading through them all, I felt no need to cry. There was no sadness or disparity left within me, only fear. I was terrified of her. Oh, it what? had only been three days, but it already seemed like she such a distant memory. Every single one of her messages That's why she left of me. manipulation Look at and the signs of a true psychopath. The worst part of it was my responses. Pretty much every text I replied with consisted of, I'm sorry, or it's my fault. I never once stood up for myself, and even trying to tell her no would be enough for her to guilt trip me. One accidental step out of line oh, and so she was ignored me for days, forcing me to come crawling back to her every single time. It wasn't back as if I had her. anyone else to go to either. At the beginning of our relationship, she went through my phone and messaged every single one of my friends, telling them I was going away and not to talk to me ever again. On she copy and paste to 50 I niggas. my phone going missing. That was probably when it all started. This boy got octopus legs the and the vegetables. One of her final messages read, You don't need anyone but me, Evan. I am your one and only. Now stop acting so ridiculous and maybe I'll forgive you, but you better make it up to me. I could hear her in my head. Her voice was shrill and angry. By that point, I had already been trying to get out for months. I just didn't have the courage to leave, to tell her what I really thought. I skipped through the rest of the messages, going all the way down to the final one. All the right. nail in the coffin. The goodbye. I'm hmm. done, Emma. Oh, you goodbye. left her. All right. I read it you out loud. It. I was so proud of myself. I was finally free. Right underneath it, before I had the chance to block her, she had already sent a reply back. You've got some new bitch, haven't you? Uh, Even reading it now, I still maybe. cannot believe I fell for her. The emotional horror she put me through still haunt me even to this day. It was like my life. Should have replied and said, uh, nah, you was the only bitch. <laughs> it wasn't even oh mine. Oh my God. I took a deep no, breath to me, after I finished I'm reading jump. them all. I then swiped Unless off and opened Tinder. That was my freedom. I swiped left, right, left, right. That's not right, how you do it. Etc. You just my keep swiping right, bro. Filled with messages, new people. God, it had been so long. My eyes were in total awe at just how many women there were. All of them so beautiful, but deep down, I still struggled with the fact that any one of them could be another Emma. Looks mean nothing when the inside is rotten. However, I refuse to let the memory of Emma ruin any more of my life than it had done already. I had a date the following week. Her name was Libby. A week later, I found myself sitting across from Libby in an Italian restaurant, gorging on pizza. Hi, Libby. The restaurant like was close to both of our homes, so we didn't have a train or a bus to catch, so the stress was light. We spent the whole of the night laughing, smiling, and talking. The date really couldn't have gone any better. That was until I turned around, looking for a waiter to get us another drink. My eyes immediately locked on a familiar face pressed up against the window outside. Is that her? I blinked, Is that Emma? too stunned to speak. Then they vanished. My heart rate soared. I needed a moment. Was that Emma? Hey, excuse me, Libby. I'm just going to head to the toilet. No worries. Don't be too long. Our dessert will be here soon. She smiled at me, and for a moment, I felt safe again. I walked off in the direction of the toilet. My expression had dropped the instant I turned around. Emma was there. I remember trying Emma. to cover my cheek as a few tears had begun drooling down She's crying it. for... Once inside, the hell is... I tried to take a deep breath, wash my face, anything to slow myself down. I was already sweating heavily from the armpits. I needed to regain control. But just as I went to dip my face below the tap, the sound of heavy feminine breathing started from within one of the stalls. Slowly, I began to lift my head to face the mirror. The second my eyes leveled with it, I saw a window at the top of the closed stall. It was wide open. I saw my face drop. My eyes started watering. My entire body froze. I told you, Evan. I told you no others. 
A voice came from within the stall. It was full of bloodlust. I began to back away, but it was already too late. In an instant, the door was flung open, revealing none other than Emma standing in the middle of the stall. Oh. A knife gripped tightly in her palm. I went to lift my... Tell her, hey, hey, Emma, hey, baby, uh, you see that, you see that girl I was in there with? Yeah, she, she trying to sit at my table and call herself, call herself me and my date. I didn't come here with her. <laughs> Start capping like a motherfucker. My hands up, as oh if to tell God. her to calm down. Wrong decision. Her nose flared, and her eyes started burning. You broke the rules, Evan. I told you no others, and you do this? Street fighter looking ass. I cannot ass. unpunished, Evan. You deserve this. All of a sudden, Emma burst out from the stall, knife in hand. She charged straight towards me and managed to plunge the knife right into my leg before Why are you I hooked standing her on here? the side of her face. Oh, catch the one. The force of the nigga. blow knocked her straight back into one of the closed stalls. Seeing my opportunity presented itself before me, I dashed straight for the exit. Whilst limping out nah. into the restaurant, I screamed for help as I, I watched I my blood be spurt all over the floor. There were plenty of people in the restaurant, so I was quick to be helped. I pointed towards the bathroom, directing some of the men to keep the door shut so she couldn't get out again. Fortunately, Libby had seen me and was already on the phone with the police. An ambulance was on the way too. Once my leg was wrapped up to stop myself from bleeding out, they arrived all at once, flooding the place with flashes of blue and yellows. I watched as the police stormed the bathroom. Finally, it had to be uh. over now, but to my utter surprise, they came out with her body. She'd slit her throat. That she was, was never dead. that serious. Since that day, my physical wounds have healed. But as for my mind, well, the trauma won't even leave me. Libby and I are together now. I'm right. finally happy. I'm mostly happy. Every night I go to sleep, Emma is staring at me. Well, that girl there's did. There's blood dripping from her throat. Yeah, whatever. She's smiling at me. I won't ever be free why you that spook niggas be scared i never thought i'd end up in a bomb. situation like this hiding from the public eye like a creep funnily enough it all started with me getting tinder i just gotten out of a serious relationship i spent you got that young years Android, of my life with Tanya. You, she had once been it, everything to me mm, only for her charm to fade rapidly when i realized it had all been a lie still that's a story for another day. In the end, it was the app that had forsaken me. I'd used it before, albeit somewhat clumsily. I wasn't really the type of guy to just go up to a woman and ask her out, which somehow translated to me being awkward online as well. But that didn't matter to me. I wanted companionship. However, so you take a picture with that demon ass cat. Hurdles. Why was it frowning Tanya, like that? She Hope. She's always been scarily good at tracking my online activity down, after all. Just let me see you one more time. See she what? even called for a wellness check oh, at me? my old oh. job. Oh, she's talking about... The police said you don't work at the office anymore. Are you okay? Let me see you. You've blocked Tanya from contacting you. To unblock her, I kept ignoring her. And finally, after a few days, she gave up. I, no, she didn't. She following I couldn't you now. keep on living with her chasing me around like that. She's gonna find you. I needed to be able to do things. And so, I trusted that Tinder would match me with other people. People who would learn to appreciate me. Liz likes you. Sarah likes you. Effie Ooh, I got that likes many you. Stop. I sought out the embrace of someone who could accept me for who I was. Damn, all A few watch. weeks were spent like that, with me running after women who'd never give me the time of day. One was more beautiful than God the other. Damn, look at they all Liz. seemed to be just messing Effie. with me. Where you get Tracy these likes you. Gosh, can you get any more boring? I feel like I'm talking to a wall. I thought a drummer would at least know how to talk to people. Sorry, Damn, he but blowing I'm it. to cats and lazy people. Damn. Bye, just bye. D Tracy was everything I wanted. Hey, I know that this sounds a little silly, but I saw that you have a cat in your pictures. I recently lost my cat after 10 years, so that warmed my heart. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. 
Yeah, Whiskers is getting a bit old, but she's great. She's missing her mom, though. I deleted what I'd written as quickly as I typed it, telling myself that this what? wasn't about Tanya. No, this was about me and Whiskers. She could use some love from others, though. Really? Yeah, we moved to a smaller place recently with her, so she's been a bit antsy, to be honest. Oh, I see. Maybe she needs a garden to roam. You could always bring her to my place. My Whiskers used to love running around in there. Her cat was called Whiskers, too? What a coincidence, I thought. That's when you stopped I talking guess. to her, because she, she I already let out a cat. Sigh. I liked where the conversation was going, but I just didn't really know how to keep it going. I knew that it was expected of me, and yet... So, Tom, you didn't say much about yourself that on boy your said, profile. I guess. What big secrets are you hiding? <laughs> Saved by an angel, I thought. <sighs> Though the question made me a bit nervous. Not much, to be honest. I'm unemployed at the moment, but seeking a job soon. I, uh, had some rough times. Oh, I see. Would you like to talk about it? I can always go over to your place and comfort you. I... Maybe not yet. Sorry, it's just that I don't know you very well and... That's okay, I understand. I guess you're smarter than I gave you credit for. Nothing came after Tracy that. Unmatched I wanted you. to punch myself oh. in the face. Tracy sounded perfect, and yet I couldn't even answer her question without offending her somehow. Still, the more I stared at her picture, praying for her to send me a new message, the more I felt like she was... familiar. I shook the feeling off. I stared at my screen, hands itching to write, but just before that, another notification popped right. up Ooh. on my screen. Huh. You can't write, you've been unmatched. That was more popular than okay. I thought. It made me smile a little. At least I could forget about Tracy for a bit. Or so I thought. Elizabeth was God stunning. Did. Though she I'm telling you, IMR know how to do one thing. Well, he do he do all this right, but he know how to do it right. <laughs> all these bitches <laughs> got their nine nines out. <laughs> he seemed to be quite secretive about herself and her bio. I I'm not gonna forget as that for a while. As silly as that is, the compliment made my cheeks flush. It was nice to be cherished. Tanya used to be really good at that. Hi, pretty. Let's drop the formalities. Want to meet up? I was startled. I knew that Tinder was full of people like her who wanted nothing more but quick love. But there's a lot I of that on Tinder. Worried. S still, I was desperate to at least meet up with some people. I've been very lonely. What? Yeah, I, I guess. Want to grab a coffee first, or? No, I trust you won't do much to me. We can meet up at your place. Does now work for you? I stared at the screen for a second. Something about that message ignited that little warning siren in my head. I wasn't sure what it was, but I wanted to be cautious. Still, I didn't want another conversation to end so abruptly. I guess. Awesome. Why he keep saying now? it? I quickly typed where I lived into Fish the app, in there, deciding that Eliza must have forgotten to ask for it. That perhaps should have been my clue to run away. But I was so, so lonely. On my way to see you, handsome. Huh? I remember confusion as Tracy messaged me right after my last awkward attempt to talk to her. Maybe she sent it to the wrong person, I wondered. Still, she would blocked me. Sorry, uh, wrong... Is it though, Tommy? Something snapped in me then. I wasn't sure what it what? was just yet. One minute, I was giddy, getting ready for my date. The next, worried. Are you playing with me? Do I seem that desperate? No, my love. I'm the desperate one. So what? Only a few seconds later, Tracy sent me a message. But the picture wasn't of her. No, it was Tanya holding my cat. That dumbass cat. <laughs> out again. Don't worry, I'm bringing her back in. Tanya. Yes, my love? Yes, my love? What the? Gosh, you're still as clueless as you used to be. So I told innocent. you it was all her, so bro. Silly. Didn't I say that? I knew they was all Don't her. Worry, the only reason I knew they was all her because that nigga, he ain't got more bitches than me. So I knew he was capping. I knew he was capping. Almost home. Whiskers still knows her mommy. Thanks for letting me back in your heart oh. after last time. I needed to shit run, ain't booming like but mine, I heard nigga. the door nah. slam shut loudly. Was she in my apartment? Uh, but how? Had she found my keys? 
Oh, Tommy, where are you? Man, why she built Tanya like different from a tight you from? To. Her hair was unkempt. From you know what? Her bloodshot eyes. There was a tremor to her hands as she stuck her head in through the door, rotting teeth curling into a disgusting grin. She held a knife uh. above her head and a pair of handcuffs in the other. I've looked she... for you all over the place, and now I have you. I can bind you to me forever. I don't know how, but I managed to push her away, her frail bones creaking as I pressed her into <laughs> the wall. I wanted to punch her, Do it. so I did. Oh, and God. Do it. Do it. It's all been just an elaborate ruse and nothing else. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I wanted to punch her, so I did. Oh God! Like I thought he was gonna stall. Look, I wanted to punch her, and so I did. Oh and me! Like, it's all been just an elaborate ruse and me? nothing else. Only Tanya was foolish enough to care about me, but I didn't care. I, I did what I had to, and then ran out as far as I could. And now, now, now you're a crackhead. I don't like, think anyone can find me. I live in the forest, like some animal. Somehow, I still hope that someone will seek me out. There's no way all that's happening because you, st bro. These these stories be wildly insane. That has been today's episode of Don't Watch These at Night, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.